morning everyone good morning ma'am uh, i am ashwini i'll be the presenter for this research that atin herbert and nitya johnson we, we have uh, conducted this and the title of our study is villains in hindi hindi cinema mind or misaligned next slide so uh, yeah so i'll just give a brief introduction so i am ashwini and I, myself and nitya we pursue psychology and she is doing her specialization in counseling psychology whereas i do in human resource development and management and athena is doing her masters in culture studies so it brought in different perspectives and we really enjoyed working on this research so the objectives of our research are to track the evolution of the concept of evil in hindi cinema from 1950 to 2020 so as you can see we have taken like a bird's eye view on the whole uh like in the cinema and the history that we have post independence and that is something that we enjoyed doing because it gave us different perspectives as we'll discuss later and the second one is to explore the link between storytelling in cinema and personal collective narratives so in that sense what we mean is that uh, as humans we really like telling stories to one another and whether it be stories about our own life or fictional characters i think we all relate to each other in different ways through our stories and we wanted to understand how india as a whole relates to each other through these fictional stories so the method that we used is the secondary research method where we sampled 15 films from every 5 year period so that's like 1950 to 55 55 to 60 that way till uh, 2015 2020 so the total number of films that we looked at was 210 and we did a content analysis of the major plot points and we got them from the united movie database which is imdb for short next right so these were the like, total films we looked at and it was a journey to be very honest like to look at all this and track the evolution of hindi cinema throughout the throughout the years and we came out feeling like exhausted yes but also really happy to have gone through this journey and seen how portrayals of heroes and villains have evolved over the years next so here i'll just be giving like a short very brief summary of the major takeaways of the kind of genres that were there and what did we understand from reading those plots and stuff so then we'll get into the theme thematic analysis so when you look at 50s and 60s i would say it was a period of like industrialization for india and this was time when you know like there was a income inequality which indians experienced due to the rapid industrialization in some areas whereas uh, the other parts were lagging behind so there were a lot of films where uh, the village money lenders and uh, zamindars were characterized as the villains and as you can see uh, drama and you know like uh, when you say romantic drama i'd say the genre is being categorized that way but mostly they do dwell on the elements in income inequality and how you know that is reconciled with the people themselves how people take the crime when they are subject to poverty that is something we'll discuss later as well so in the 50s and 60s we also see a presence of the foreign threat so mostly in terms of british or pakistan so in terms of like you know looking at these uh, countries as something as invading forces that india has to like deal with and some that causes a lot of stress so that uh, and another thing to like mention here a uh, example that i would like to give is the movie avara where the villain character a uh, jagga who is driven to uh, crime because of the poverty that they experience is actually characterized as a villain and the system here is not under question but rather the fact that the person is doing the crime so that aspect actually changes with the years and we'll see how that tracks next slide so 70s and 80s uh, so this i would say is a period where action really dominated hindi cinema as a whole we saw movies where crime bosses were the ones who ruled the screens and they explored themes of underworld and how politicians be corrupt and the villains were more like larger than life and they also show the influence of power and money both combined together how it can have an effect on the common man so and in the 70s and 80s films like bazigar and dar also kind of looked at the darker side of heroes as well where you're looking at how grief can be a motive for crime which i can we'll discuss later so next slide so in the 90s and 2000s i'd say i the action genre fell slightly behind in 90s obviously you can see that uh, it's major influence but in terms of the movie's plots themselves when you look at it we felt that the action was driven by conflict in romance 
or a conflict in family so like we have films like maine pyar kiya or like hum saath saath hai where like a lot of these films are like revolve or kabhi kuch hi kabhi for that matter like all of the action or all of the drama that's there in the film is because of romantic conflict or patriarchy and values like that so the villains are more characterized through that manner so the next slide so 2010s is a very interesting decade i can say 2010 to 2020 and that's because of the rise of the comedy drama which was very interesting to note for us because that was a rise of satire and it's not to say that satire was not present before but satire during the 2010s really took a big place where larger than like systems like patriarchy or capitalism were really questioned through comedy and that made things very relatable for individuals and that was the main take away from you know the 2010s where we had relatable heroes and like ambiguous villains let's say next one so right so now uh, i think my power came back I'll, on my video <laughs> right so uh, first up we have the theme of poverty being the real evil next slide right so when i say poverty being the real evil in these films like we have to note that what we found in the plot while analyzing was that evil is a precondition to life and that is something that the characters in the films and the char- and as as people realize and that there is a certain duality to life about how if let's say you have a life of wealth and privilege you are much what say you are more privileged in a way because you have good education you have good opportunities in life and when you're not uh you fall into uh, fall into a life of crime and become a bandit and i think this is really explored in in the portrayal of dopal gangers in films so there are way, many many films like films like jewel thief sita or geeta the great gambler fande bas khan chalbaz a lot of them from like the 60s and 70s until 90s a lot of these films used dopal gangers as like or twin characters to say how what would happen to people's lives if they were split apart and had different nurturing experiences one being privileged and the other being poor and what happens to these characters so usually what we see is that the character who's poor ends up joining the life of crime but again the important thing to note here is the importance of framing so when the hero character is you know joining the life of crime their crime is justified by the fact that they are a hero and that they have a moral conscience and that you know they're doing that crime for a larger better reason they are almost like a robin hood character where they steal from the rich to give it to the poor and they're benevolent whereas the same crimes if they're committed by a poor person who is categorized as a villain same thing as i said for jagga in avara right so in that way they are characterized as a villain and their actions as bad and they as evil by characteristics of personality so i think that is like a big take away from this uh, is the framing effect that the whole theme induces us to think so and also that capitalism is inevitable and that has percolated in many of our stories and as the years went on like even after 90s we saw a economic revival for a whole country and even then the presence of inequality is there both in real life and in films next slide okay so the second uh, theme that we found most interesting is reformation through insight next slide so what do i mean by reformation through insight so the best way to explain that is in dilwale dulhe le jayenge the father in the end says uh ja beta ye le apni zindagi that's a like that's an iconic line and that's what this theme represents throughout so this is where characters realize that they're being bad that they are hindering the protagonist from achieving something good so therefore they achieve that insight and they are then good people they because you realize something you are then good so another example would be a early 50s spy film I, i'm forgetting the name now but where uh, the there were two girls who were pakistan or who were british spies and they realized that they're doing bad by being british spies so then they they then joined the indian army and helped the indian army instead by being like a double agent and because of that insight they're then characterized as good people so i think that was a major theme and in like villains realizing that they're bad uh, but if they realize and tell it to others and they correct their actions then they're good and this moment of insight also comes at the lowest point of the journey when like all like all hope is lost 
when everything is gone downhill that's when you have this moment of insight then the like overall theme that life's lessons are taught by suffering and that today's suffering is tomorrow's glory and now that you have a perfect life that because you realize that you're a good person and that good deeds will always be rewarded and that is also something that we noted next slide right so this theme the idea of nationhood is something that looms large over most of the films next one so where here we see individuals as, as being representatives of the whole nation whereby if an individual conquers another individual then that means the nations have conquered over each other and films like gunde asks like who is an indian like at all like the new films i mean where you're looking at immigrants and seeing what constitutes as an indian is it the political identity is it the citizenship is it religion sometimes like a lot of these nuances are being explored then the pakistan problem by that i mean you all of these films never define why pakistan is a problem or why are they the antagonists of the films that they are in if you just say pakistan the audience will understand that they are bad and i think that's something to keep in mind like why is that a still red that's associated then then the new films like dangal or chak de india using sports as a battlefield to like highlight india's prowess and showing their dominance over the other countries and over other more european countries as well as a means to say that even though we are economically not so, so like not so high as them we will still defeat them in sports and also villains hiding in plain sight such as terrorists like movies like rustam or holiday or ekta tiger they all explore that next one grief as a motive for revenge next one next one i think we have definitely spoken about this in the earlier parts as well where death of a parent or violation of a woman that the protagonist uh like is associated with be it their wife or mother or sister uh, that causes them to take revenge and their actions are justified even though they are like crimes they are justified because they are the hero and again the framing framing effect comes in there's an us versus them mentality where we are seen as the benevolent whoever we are we are seen as the benevolent ones and the others are seen as the malignant one and the intensity of crime of the hero is very different from the intensity of the same thing done by the villains and grief is used as a justification for crime next one women in bollywood i think this is something that all of us know there are common tropes where you know women are uh, can you go back yeah where they are <laughs> uh, damsel in distress and they need to always prove their worth and even if they're seen as villains they're seen as seductresses like a henchman to the main villain they're almost never the main villain they're always like luring them to the trap and then the main villain actually does the like evil thing that they want to do so <laughs> i think this is a problematic trope in itself and they always are in need of a savior be it a villain or be it a hero next and okay just one minute and the last one is the ambiguity of inner demons which is what the newer films explore where films like ye jawani hai diwani or all that they explore the anxieties of growing up and ask and even films like the dirty picture which ask why do we sexualize women i think the villain over here is not an external entity but yourself so i think that's what the newer films are exploring next it's pretty much done so the conclusion is that from being maligned these villains are actually you know we are exploring why or if they are misaligned like instead of asking who is evil we are asking who is not evil like what is not evil in this present world so i think that's the evolution that we are from thank you so much